In this video, I'm going to show you how you can import a DXF file into IntelliCubic on the Sodic Wire EDM machine. To input the file, first transfer the DXF file to the machine's hard drive with the USB. Uh, once you have it transferred, now we can open the file using the model button. Uh, Select from the model definition and set it to 2D file insertion and click the browse button. You should see your file name in the displayed menu. If the machine or if the part 00 origin needs to be shifted, you would use at the bottom left as the place model window. You click on that and you have some choices in here to be able to move the workpiece uh, origin, uh, also to move the shape in X and Y or rotate the shape. I will show how you do some of those functions in an upcoming video. Once the geometry is on the screen, uh, next step we would want to do is to insert a starting hole because I see there is no hole drawn in the shape already or on the screen already for a start hole. So we're going to go 2D drawing and starting hole and we will enter a value here which makes sense. 40 thousandths will work fine for our part and if I know where X and Y needs to be I can type in X and Y for where the starting hole is and it gives me a preview here in yellow. If I have an element that I want to select manually with the mouse, I can press this arrow key and then I can hover with the mouse and it lights up red. I can use those positions. I clicked here, so that's why 0.25x, 1.15y is shown. I want to leave these at just 0, 0 and click New and close it. So now I have my start hole at 0, 0. Okay, next step is feature recognition, con and you choose from this menu, contour extraction. You use this one 90, 95% of the time as your next step. We enter in a program height. This will just uh, be important if we were doing tapering, uh, but at this point it's a value that's going to show us how thick a part will be shown when I click the isometric view. It'll show it at one inch thick. I want to start from the center so I'm making a die shape and because I have all these other elements on the screen I have little triangles for these arrowheads that came in and such or there could be other stuff on the DXF file which we do not want to wire cut so I want to click an element on my shape somewhere that will enter in into this field for the start element that means it's only going to be selecting this group of elements and it won't be selecting the arrowheads. So when I click extract I get just the one shape. So I have my uh, feature uh, made now. Next step is to move over to machining path and path generation. On the list here, if I have more than one shape, you'll have a big long list. But in this example, it's just one shape, so I only have one contour right now in this example. You will, uh, next step is to uh, click Generate Path, and up comes this, the menu that we're going to fill in for our glue tab distances and how many passes. Uh, so this button here is to search for your cutting conditions. So you would fill this out the same way you would uh, fill out the wire machines menu. You should have learned this in the wire class, how you enter in this menu. I'm going to turn on the corner control at the top and I'm going to make it a three time pass program. So I'm going to pick this one here for three passes. Uh, On the machining settings on the right side is the starting cut length. This will be the length that it moves from the start hole with a weaker power setting and then it will switch to your full power setting for the rest of the way around. That only influences the rough cut. So I'll enter in some distance here that's roughly a little less than the length of the lead in line. 
and the residual stock will be how big our glue tab will be. So I'm going to put a 30,000 stop distance here. That's what this residual stock means. It's more like a tab width for at the end of the cut. It'll stop a little short with an M00 and the machine will beep at you so you're standing there to cut it off. So once I have that filled out, uh, I will hit OK. At the bottom left, you will see specify starting hole. So we're going to click on that hole we made earlier. And now it says specify entry element, which I'll put at 12 o'clock or this element here. And basically it's done at this point. Next step is NC conversion, convert to NC. And in the NC file name, type in your program name you want to call it. I'll call it EX1 and hit the convert button. And that'll make the G code for the wire machine. It'll be sitting in the wire machine's memory. You just press the uh, edit button and you should see the program in the memory of the machine.